welcome to the Diplomats, or if you're a DBN, the Diplomacy Broadcast Network listener, you will think we are called the Diplomacists. No, we are the Diplomats, and we have another podcast, this time talking to you about probably the most prestigious tournament of the year, Weasel Moot 14, along with my podcast partner, Umble the Heap, from the Nexus server. We are here to talk about Weasel Moot, sponsored by DiplomacyBriefing.com. How are you doing, Umble? I'm doing great. Well, we uh, we went into Weasel Mo- Moot, and we had a lot of high-ranking players. Maybe even one of them is uh, you on here. Yeah, I was surprised to kind of see that, but I guess they they have something set up with their including um, from past tournaments uh, of the virtual tournaments. So even though I've not played in the virtual league at this point, because I've done fine in the virtual tournaments, I'm apparently, at least currently, I think I qualify for, uh, my understanding is a special tournament they're going to do in the uh, in winter at some point. Correct. I, I don't know if it's the top 21 or 28 people ranked, but yeah, some sort of special tournament. And uh, they're creating a new diplomacy ranking system. Supposedly, they counted uh, Nexus Season 4 and virtual tournaments, is my understanding. So, uh, would you agree with my characterization that Weaselmoot is a, you know, a massive tournament on the virtual calendar? Yeah, I think it's one of the big uh, tournaments um, in North America. The main reason being is um, the Chicago group has been one of the most active um, clubs. And so because of that, it's got a lot of members that play. I think they always play at least monthly. They may play twice a month on normally. And it's been that way for well over a decade. And so it always, it makes that one of the, the ones that you want to go to it's there in Chicago. I think in the last 10, 15 years, they've hosted the world diplomacy championship twice and done a really good job. So uh, it is it is one. I've, I've played a face-to-face tournament in Chicago, but it wasn't Weasel Mood. It was CodCon back in 2013. It was my first face-to-face. I so can tell you, I, I, the, the Weasels are super organized. They are the ones behind the Diplomacy Broadcast Network. They're doing so much for the hobby. It's quite impressive. Uh, and uh, it was exciting for both you and me to play this tournament and today we're going to be talking about your round one game one which occurred on august 29th but we will not be releasing this until the week after labor day because uh there's still a second round and there's still a final round to go yeah yeah it it was a uh it was an interesting game for sure um well just to kind of like preview stuff i did top this board but, Here are the players. Um, okay. Did you know who these people were? Uh, I knew two of them. I knew Kleiser from just talking with him a lot. He organizes stuff in the Netherlands. He's also a moderator on WebDip. Um, he's a very good player. He's done well at uh, the different face-to-face tournaments he's been a part of. So I knew him. I knew uh, of Eric uh, Grinnell, too, because he played, which was Lex Luthor. He plays uh, different things online, and he's pretty well known in the face-to-face, so I knew of him. I never played anybody on this board, but I think you've played at least one of them or two of them. I've played with Eric online, uh, Gunboat, through a Discord server called Speedboat, which is essentially Gunboat Games that are over in two hours uh, and found him tactically very sound. He's a big personality on the, on the uh, discord server. Uh, and he's a diplomacy face-to-face veteran for sure. Uh, and he's a lawyer. Yeah, he's one. So. Term. Yeah. He's, yeah. He, oh he's, yeah. He's one weasel. Mood, in fact, I can see yeah. that. He, he won. That. Yeah, he won Weasel Moot uh, maybe two or three years ago. And I also know Chris McKinney. I played Chris McKinney uh, in a game at, and I can't remember, I think it was Liberty Cup, uh, and it was one of his first games of diplomacy. And I'm also on, he's also on the Speedboat 
uh, Discord server. Uh, I know him to be a MIT student who is learning the game very quickly and has started to get uh, a lot of sun, uh, solos and gunboat. Nice guy. And he, he yeah. knows there. Yeah. Well, and I know Klaus. Yeah. I, I mean, I've played him multiple times, uh, including in a virtual yeah. tournament. All right. Okay. So, uh, man, you got England again. You love England. Right. Well, you had to be feeling good I mean, with that. Well, I like all the powers, but um, it's I've been for whatever reason in these virtual tournaments. It seems every single time I've been in one, this is my third. They've always given me England, and the last two I got best England in, and uh, in the Nexus online tournaments I've soloed or topped the board, and all of those ones is England too. So I've I've got a lot of experience uh, playing England in some high level games, and I I like. I like playing England, but I would say more of it is like I've just been I've been giving it given it a lot. I I it, people would probably think it's my best power, but I haven't really got to play a lot of my a lot of the other ones either in these tournaments. But yeah, I got England. I looked at it and I was like, okay, let's uh, let's see if we can do three for three. Um, this this particular game um is unlike my other england games the other england games i was pretty comfortable throughout uh all of them it it was um pretty straightforward really tactically efficient this game is not nearly as tactically efficient and there's one of the reasons is there's a lot more going on diplomacy um i wasn't able to find that early ally and just work the game with them and so do you have a preference uh, it, on working with f or g um, no, not really. Uh, I think like as far as ease of going to top the board, probably an EF is easier, um, at least to do it quickly. But um, I, it really comes down to the person. That's really what it is for me between them. It, who is going to be uh, who's going to be easy to work with? And that really determines it. Now, coming into the game, I didn't know anything about the player who played France, but, and I, but I talked a lot with Germany. So, uh, that player, um, through, uh, on discord. So I, I naturally kind of le was leaning towards doing, uh, EG because I knew him. I thought it'd be fun to do a game with them. And that's kind of where I was leaning. Now and he's it's going to end up. And you know, he's a solid player, you know, he's yes. tactically sound, uh, you know, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what you want. And also, you know, I know the, the 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 person playing Russia is a very good player too. So, you know, hey, maybe I I I want to stick with them so that I can, you know, kind of that can be a buffer. So, I that's where I was really leaning starting uh right from the spring negotiation. And uh how did how did you get along with France? It was nice. He was a real nice pleasant person um but like i said again there was um some personality uh reasons that i lent towards germany but no france was um was good as far as you know initially he was good you know looking back it definitely seems that france wanted a western triple and perhaps germany did too i i think they both did but they they never communicated it clearly to me now i threw it out there but individually when i was talking with both of them i was always trying to figure out another way to go about it and perhaps i would have been i i was figuring out which one i wanted to attack and i wasn't really that interested in a western triple which i I think ultimately the reason I wasn't overly interested in it was just once again there was some there were some diplomatic breakdowns that kind of forced my hand a little bit of or at least how I approached this particular game. Probably looking back, probably I should have maybe gone with the Western Triple, but early on there's some targeting of Eric uh, as the Russian player and and it just wasn't communicated. I think that's the big thing. Things were not communicated to me well, so things would happen and I was trying to figure out what was going on, and I just had a hard time getting a pulse on the board of what really was happening. That's sort of the next that's question probably I have, reason. which is England's negotiations with Russia are always important. Eric is a persuasive and very uh, 
opinionated guy. How did your initial negotiations go with him? It, oh, it was good. And so that's the thing with Eric. Like when you're talking with him, you're going to be able to get a plan and, okay, let's do this. Let's make this happen. And um, as far as negotiations go, um, pretty flexible, I felt. Um, and we found a lot, we had a, we found a lot of agreement on how to play right from the get go. And, um, so I, that was probably another reason why I didn't really jump on the Western triple either right away, but there was some other, you know, it, it's, I, I thought about this game over, you know, especially a little bit, uh, today, just trying to think, wrap my mind around why I made some of the decisions I made and why some other things didn't happen. And I really feel like, and this is where communication is so important in these games. Like you need to be able to communicate with people exactly what you're wanting to do, exactly, you know, the direction that it's going to be going long term. And and in that first year, year and a half, really, um, there there was there was some some communication things that happened and some moves that happened that I didn't feel like I was really in the loop on some stuff. And that that really influenced the direction that I kind of put myself in that I just had to keep going. All right. And it so worked out for to, me. But this, yeah, let's, let's but go it, to the yeah. game uh, because. Okay. Here, hold on for a second. Let me get to slide one. Here we go. Spring 1901. I, I just found a lot of these moves. Bizarre. And I wanted your insight with uh, Germany going into Silesia. Yeah. Uh, I assume Paris went to Picardy because there was a DMZ of Burgundy. Your moves are very standard, but didn't you see the bounce in Piedmont? What's what's going on here? My understanding that was arranged. Um, I think I remember France saying something about that or Italy saying about that. My understanding in the spring, it was an arranged bounce. Um, that move to Silesia, I knew nothing about. Um, you know, Germany wasn't going. I, I, in the spring though, I talked with him. I'm like, Hey, can you support me? And he was like, or I think we're talking about Belgium. And he was like, yeah, you can have Belgium. That's fine. No problem. But, um, I know he didn't mention anything about Silesia. I don't think I really pressed him on any of that, but, uh, I talked with both of them about Belgium. They were both good with me, um, having Belgium. So the Silesia move was surprising, but that honestly was really based a lot on his wariness of the Russian player. And I think his thought was, I'll put a little bit of pressure on him early, I guess. Uh, and so he went that direction. So the, here's the issue. I, I'm, my, I'm leaning towards wanting to do an EG against France because I know the German player, at least with, we've had some conversations. And now he's got an army committed away from France. Yeah. And so he's away from France. And so, okay. All right. Um, and, and I suppose at this point I should have been thinking a little bit more. All right. Well, maybe a Western triple. Uh, but, um, yeah, so that, that's basically the board. I mean, we can go on to the next one unless you have a question. No, no. Okay. All right. All right. You got you got to set me up better for the transitions there. Sorry. Uh, France. Okay, here, France is, here we go. Fall yeah. 1901. We're talking to, to France. I was talking to France, so this is this is kind of a funny point in there. He was like, he's like, he's like, there's no need to worry. I'm not going to take Belgium. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I said. I said, I understand that maybe you won't take Belgium. I said, you're not, that's not going to happen anyway, because I'm convoying there. I said, I need to make sure that I will be able to take Belgium. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> you know, you play enough with these people. Sometimes you hear things, you know, and you're like, wait a minute, are they phrasing it this way for a reason to be able to come back and say, well, I didn't lie to you. Uh, but um, yeah, he moves back to Paris. I don't think that was a very optimal move. Um, I mean, at the time I didn't, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal to me because I got Belgium. Um, right. I mean, you would have thought that, I don't think the DBN guys pointed us out that he'd just support you into Belgium or, you know, right. you know, it's yeah. a little strange to move back to Paris because that's where you're theoretically going to want to build. Right. Uh, but the thing that strikes me is Germany does not bounce Russia out of Sweden, but tries yes. to support Austria into Galicia. I, yes. I don't get so. That's schizophrenic in my mind, but Klaus is such a good player. 
I can't get into his brain to figure out what's going on. So what did you think was happening? Yeah, so here – oh, and that's a good – that's good bringing that up because here was the issue. Um, Klaus was very, very nervous about Russia moving to the Baltic. He was very nervous about that, and um, I, I, it was a positional thing. And so Russia actually came to me, and he was like, hey, why don't you go to the Baltic, and you can um, – I'll you know, convoy to Denmark. And I was like – I know I'm getting Belgium, so I don't need to risk that. <laughs> so, but um, I mentioned that to Germany too, and so um, I I didn't push him to move to Sweden because I thought he was going to. I, I probably should have pushed him a little bit harder to do that, but I, um, you know, he didn't move, and so Russia gets into Sweden. So that's another thing that's like okay, that's again starting to push me a little more, bit more towards an EF. Um, but he was really – I guess he really didn't want to get in Sweden and have the Russian fleet in the Baltic. I mean at the end of the day, I don't think it would have been that big of a deal, uh, but he, he didn't want to, he didn't want to do that. And I mean it's that was – It's kind of a hard call for Russia too. He probably yeah. is going to get bounced in Sweden with the, with the move to Silesia in the prior season. Uh, you know, I'm surprised that he, uh, and if, you know, I'm just surprised either well, the Turkey is, about the Baltic, he doesn't move there. It's all bizarre to me, the whole thing. Well, and the guy, you know, in Turkey, like I, my understanding here, you know, if you're going to move to the Black Sea, you might as well move to Romania. If, as long as that wasn't agreed, which I don't think it was agreed, you might as well move to Romania. So that was kind of, um, kind of messed that up there, sitting there and moving to the Black Sea. but. He, there's going to be some missteps, the, especially that both Turkey and Italy make that are going to hurt their game. Italy had this kind of desire to go towards France, and I was okay with that. I said, hey, if you're going to go towards France, get Germany on board, and we'll go take them out. So I was fine with it. But um, you're going to see from the builds that, um, again, he's not doesn't make any builds that that is going to go towards France. And so that was – this This tournament was different than the other two I've played because you couldn't talk during builds or retreats. You weren't allowed to, to do what that. What did you think of that? Um, I, I personally think that during the virtual tournament they should allow those things because it makes it different. It's another aspect of negotiation. I think it's I, – I like it. I like being able to do that. It's more diplomacy, right? So that – the reason why they don't let you talk – during builds in a face-to-face environment is because um, you'd have to wrangle everybody back to the board and then you have to do adjudication too. Like there's no adjudication time in these games because it's all software. So it immediately adjudicates. You don't have to read orders. You don't have to do any of that. So, so I, I, I think they should let it. It makes it a little unique and different. So that's, that's my opinion on it. Well, the builds well, happen, you know, this is go ahead. But I mean, Fran- you don't, you build a fleet London, but it's yeah. an army breast with Germany right. not a real threat. I'm surprised France doesn't build a fleet and no negotiation. So, was that a surprise to you? My looking at it, yeah, I mean, it was definitely a surprise. Looking at it, um, I think his thought was, and maybe there was a misorder there, because normally what what will happen is France will build one fleet and an army in this situation. Right. And so it, it was it was obviously friendly to me, which you know I appreciated. My builds were pretty normal. Um, you know, putting a fleet in London and an army in in Edinburgh is nothing nothing new. And but you know I've been talking with Germany about this attacking France strategy, and he builds up there and it's not terrible to me but it's just become very apparent i can't attack france now um unless i do it solo and and so then he so when we talk germany says to me well i didn't build an army in munich because he could have put his army in munich he goes i didn't put my army in munich because you 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 put an army in belgium and that's anti-german or something like that which is ridiculous. It's not. And he had agreed that you go to Belgium. <laughs> right, right. He had never said, "Hey, I only want a fleet." Um, 
so I felt like to me that like that when when people say things to me that I either I feel like are excuses or that aren't true um, or justifications, I don't I mean, like, I don't like that. And so that was a strike first. Now, the thing about how who was playing France, he was a very agreeable person. And we're going to find pretty soon that while he is very agreeable, he he is a, he'll say yes to things, but then not do it. <laughs> so that, you know, that can kind of be a weakness. You can find people that will say yes all the time. I played with a few people and you're like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with them. I'll ally with them. And then you just find out they lie to you every single turn. <laughs> and uh, um, uh, so quick, quick, uh, yeah, that, that's, go that's going to happen uh, a few times as we go forward. But uh, at this point, you know, everything's going going well. And, Are you worried uh, at all about Russia? It looks like there's an RT, there's a build north, no build in Sevastopol with a fleet in the black. And you think, well, Norway's probably, you know, well, uh, on I the table. Know, I was, gonna... No, I wasn't worried because you can see that Germany built a fleet in Berlin, an army in Silesia. So Russia wants me to work with him. Um, he, he's not going to take Norway because that's such a short-term move and I can take it back anyway. He's, he's not going to do that. So with Germany doing the builds he did, I, I come back and I say, well, look, if I'm going to be able to fight France, I'm going to need another build because you're not committing to the south. And I said, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you then you're going to give me Sweden. And he, he wouldn't commit to that. Oh, no, no, no. I, he didn't say I couldn't have it, but it, it just the messaging wasn't good. And France was talking about going against Italy. And so – like I'm putting the pieces together that there's a there's a desire to do a Western triple, but nobody says it. <laughs> and so to me, uh, because it's not said, my thought process is, you know what? I'm going to make the moves that are going to give me options, and I will I will guarantee taking Sweden myself. So I I'm not going I'm not committing against Germany at this point, but I'm going to put my fleet in a place that I can, you know, in it influenced both well it's an awkward so, spot because england isn't typically the one that wants to be gung-ho with a western triple because they tend to tend to be pretty favorable for england so you know you kind of have to be the one being approached uh and it seems like they the way you're describing it they they didn't really ask you out on the date they were just floating the idea well it was you know if you're if we're going to continue the analogy it's like it's like the shy the shy guy that you know, is upset that the girl doesn't go on a date with him, but he never asked her. He just kind of like was friendly to her. And so, you know, on the Western triple, like I, I, at some point, I think I even mentioned something about a Western triple and all that. And I think they probably agreed, but this was, it's just not, they had never like really approached it. And I don't know, maybe I was just set on my course with wanting to attack one of them. I mean, looking back, I, that was a whole, that wasn't a way I could have gone and an option I could have gone. But um, we, I just wasn't clicking with Germany. And so since I wasn't clicking with Germany, as far as in our negotiations, I didn't – and I was doing okay with Eric clicking on that, and I was doing good with France, and his units are right there. He's got pressure on him. It just became, hey, I'll, I'll attack. And so I kind of – I really like this moveset I did because it gave me a lot of options. Right. Um, you know, and France is wanting to do something against Italy, which is fine. I tried to encourage France to move to Spain, but... Right, the MAO fleet's a little something you yeah. have to watch for. But you have an army at York. It looks yeah. like every unit on this board, except for uh, Portugal and Smyrna, move west. Uh, sorry, move east. And uh, poor Russia, that had to have been an NMR. Yes, yeah. He... Um, uh, there, there was an issue. This, this particular one was an issue uh, with um, the GM paused it and like with a minute to go, and he hadn't got his orders in. And then when they restarted it, it went through. It was kind of a big mess. It actually cost a half hour of our time in our game because oh. they, you know, he wanted to be able to make moves then, and so it had to go up the chain and. It took a half hour before we finally started. 1902. Okay. So this was obviously a pivotal moment, a decision to make. Um, Germany has said, 
okay, I will support you to Sweden. I will do that. Um, and yeah, I, I think my thought process on the whole thing was, all right, I take Sweden, then maybe I get St. Petersburg, someone's going to want Belgium. And it just seemed like everything was kind of set up to take, uh, take something from Germany. Now, this was tactically not good in the fall. Um, what I should have done is I should have supported Burgundy to Ruhr. I should have I shouldn't have gone for Holland because in retrospect, you know, Klaus made every single move that he should have done. That's, that's exactly what what he should have done. Did he smell uh, it was coming? I mean, he obviously well, made a lot of good guesses here. Yeah, he didn't really need to do anything. And he just needed to play somewhat defensive and see what I did. Now, if I were him, I probably would have done Ruhr to Holland because that could have been cut. But um, I didn't think about that because he was like, I'm going to do Burgundy to Munich. I actually I think I floated to France. Hey, please cut that support. And he's like, no, I want to try to get Munich. And I said, all right, fine. And, and I told him, OK, if I get just, you know, come in Belgium, if I get Holland, then, you know, you're going to get a build. So I offered him to take Belgium. I'll get up to Holland. If I'd used North Sea to support um, Skagrak down, I would have got that. And I, I should have done that in retrospect. Um, what happened though was I was kind of going back and forth on what to do and I made that decision and there was a better way to go about it. Or, you know, the other thing I could have done is I could have, I pro actually, I should have convoyed that army over into Denmark is what I should have done. Anyway, um, yeah, he stops all of them and it, it was a lot of fun there because he, uh, after he, I, I told him, I said, well, I said, Hey, good, good guess. And he's like, Oh, he said, like, I, I saw, I would, I, I, it was obvious what you were going to do. He said, uh, he goes, I would have expected better from you. I'm, I'm pretty disappointed. <laughs> 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 so I'm like, okay, well, sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I mean, technically it, it, there was a much better way to go about all of that. And, um, but the big thing was, I was just like not getting a good read on everybody. And so some of these, this next like two years, some of this stuff is just like kind of making decisions a little bit last minute and there was a much more efficient way to go about this that i think in a normal game i would have i would have put together but i just you can see from some of my moves like none of them are like super super trusting either because i just i i you know italy i mean france is talking about going some against italy but then also saying okay uh you know let's do something with germany so it's just really it was it was it was a it was a weird feeling that i was getting yeah, this is sort of, uh, it looks like it's an E with half of R and half of F with the, uh, yeah, what we yeah, got here going to the spring of 03. Yeah. And of course, you know, Klaus, you know, he, he triple supports um, or double supports Denmark because this time we did three. And I actually was supporting um, Eric into Denmark, and I was going to take Sweden because I was like, okay, that's going to be a good spot for me. Let me um, put him into Denmark, and I'll take Sweden, and that'll be a really strong position in the north. And the way I sold it to Eric was um, that way we can demilitarize Norway and St. Petersburg. So I really liked that idea of pushing him down there. But um, he stops that. And at the same point, then France. Doc gets, uh, yeah, he's like, oh, in the hey. spring, in the spring, no less. Correct. He goes, hey, I'll grab that and take it from him. And the thing is, like I was telling him, look, you're going to get Belgium. I'm going to give it to you. So you'll notice what I did is I I supported him to Ruhr. I supported right. him to Ruhr. And the, the plan which he, that he agreed with was, OK, you'll get to Ruhr, Ruhr and then I'll support into Holland and you can walk right into Belgium. Oh. And, and yeah, it would have worked. No problem. You would get Belgium. But instead, he decides to do that. So, and here's the thing to me I'm like, okay, if you do this, like you can see where Russia's at. I said, You're, you need me to counteract Russia. Uh, Germany, I don't think, is going to be able to do that. Well, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and so, Whatever we planned in the fall to do, I think it was I was going to convoy. Yeah, I think this was going to happen. I was I was going to convoy to Holland, 
And he's like, okay, I'll support you. Because I said, it's fine that you get Belgium. That's no problem. I said, I, I expected you to have it. So I tried to do a reset there with France, explain why it should be good. He says, he agrees. Okay, yeah, let's do that. What about and, Germany uh, and Russia? Do you try and turn turn Germany back? Well, Germany, if you'll notice, again, he supports me to Sweden. Um, but I don't take it. And... Again, it just – like to me, positionally, it made better sense at this point to attack Germany. And so I think, well, okay, well, if I have a fleet in Sweden and and he's, his fleet's in Denmark, I go, that's a great foothold for me to have. And so – and again, France is saying all the right things before these moves too. Yeah, 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 we'll do this. So to me, it's like this is going to really get me a good position, but France is not going to be telling the truth for the next year and a half. Um, and uh, – so yeah, so here, you know, um, Klaus uh, blocks me again, and it's the same conversation. I, I say, good job, and he's, oh, you know, that was really poor. You you should have done so much better. I can't believe this. I can't believe that. Right. And so he's laying it on again about, um, you know, how much I'm disappointing him in my play. So well, let's look at it, the fall. Here we go. Yeah, not not as disappointing this time. So, I mean, it's still not great, you know, but what was supposed to happen was I break support and kill, right? And he supports so me in you Holland. Can get Den you can get Denmark, but he's worried about Russia, so he can't support Denmark right. with Baltic. Yeah, I should have been getting a build because France was supposed to support me into Holland. He doesn't. He doesn't support me into Holland. So, you know... Uh, Instead of Germany going down and going to three and then me getting him right into Munich, um, now now Germany is, you know, he, he's still down one because I took Der Denmark and, I, and I'm and i not losing anything. Th that was very helpful. Not losing something in that moment was really helpful. And so Russia had supported me to Denmark. France builds two fleets. Um, yeah, helped. you got the fleet in breath. So, but you have an army on the continent. You got a fleet in North Sea, but it's precarious yeah. right now. I mean, you're on the knife's edge. Yeah, it's not it's not a bad position or anything, but it's not a good position either. And France is in a very powerful position at the same time. So, you know, he's already down there in the south. And really, the truth is this: you know, France should have been a little more patient. But what he's going to do is he's going to just. He's really going to start just dock grabbing stuff, trying to grab stuff from Germany, trying to grab stuff from from me too at the same time. So he's like just spread out. So here he's supposed to support me to Holland, right? <laughs> Doesn't do it. It just so happens though that you got um, Germany. yes, because Germany doesn't go there. Um, I guess his thought process on the whole thing was that I was going to be supporting into Holland anyway. So I was able to just walk right in, which is crazy, but I was able to walk right in and I didn't get that destroyed. Um, so is Klaus was, pleased with your play this time or still disappointed? Uh, he doesn't say anything at this point. <laughs> You're uh, not talking. He's not, well, I don't remember him. He probably made some off. I don't remember, but he's not saying he's disappointed because at this time, at this point, it's, you know, it's getting tougher on him. I'm in Holland. Um, you know, we made moves to guarantee that Denmark, you know, wouldn't get, you know, would most likely not be lost. So, um, yeah, so this was fortunate that I didn't get that army destroyed. It was very so, fortunate. Well, correct. And so now was the plan for France to be in the English Channel? He's already no. not supported you into Holland. <laughs> and now I see no. this move to the English Channel. No, oh, he was supposed to support me into Holland and go Burgundy to Ruhr and set himself all up. And he was not supposed to go to the English Channel. He was supposed to go to Mid-Atlantic, but he lied to me again. He's a very agreeable guy. He just isn't telling me the truth every single so, time. <laughs> so now now you're here. Yeah. And uh, we, I'm going to show you what I think is one of your two really good moves. Not that maybe you had more. The two moves that stood out to me. But what is your thinking? You're an advanced player about what you need to do to address that threat of the English Channel fleet that's not supposed to be there before the fall. Yeah. Uh, so what I was 
thinking was going to happen because it's what I would probably do in that situation. I thought he was probably going to try to convoy Belgium to Wales. And so it, it, it's obviously a risky thing because if they just go for London, they get the center. And that's that's very difficult to come back from. So I I was concerned that he would convoy into Wales in the fall turn. So that's why I did Liverpool to Wales. All right. Let's uh, we can switch it. Good guess. Yeah. Well, and the nice thing is because he moved to the Irish Sea. No convoy. Yeah, there's no convoy opportunities, and I've got it on the defensive at this point. So um, I also, if you'll notice, so notice what France does here. He attacks me in Holland, which I, I had supported, because at this point, his assurances were over. I was not going right. to be believing him. Uh, and here's the real thing to me that that I think was really, really poor. He supported Austria into Munich. So he made a play, which I I guess I get what he's doing, but he makes a play where he decides he's going to throw a fleet at me. And I guess he must have thought he was going to get Holland. Uh, Maybe he thought that Klaus was going to support him. I don't know. But I supported supported myself. Um, Russia supported me. And I was able to keep... I was able to keep Holland, and I was going to get a build now. And 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 Germany lost another one because of France's support. So France was, you know, he was really under – he really was attacking all of us. And to me, I felt like it was very opportunistic and not really the greatest long-term decision because the truth of the matter is this. Like Russia, you can see, is getting into a better spot now. He's at a good position. And so France's decision to continue to attack me and not allow me to put pressure on Russia, I told him, I said, look, and I've been telling him this for the last year and a half. I said, look, if you keep doing this, it's, I'm going to play the role of who tops this board, and it's going to be either you or Russia at this point. And I said, I will make sure that it's Russia who tops the board if you keep doing this. I go, this isn't a long-term thing. And one of the reasons I kept believing him when he'd say yes is because I felt like he had to be able to see how this would end if he kept attacking me because the, he, he just he didn't have the force set up to take anything. He was just giving Russia more opportunity. So anyway – I get a build, which was very, so very let's, helpful. Here, hold on. Are we going to move to the builds? This is another fantastic, maybe the play of the game. Uh, I certainly feel so for me. Because, oh, and we'll see why later, but there had to have been an internal debate. I could make a case either way, but I, I know you got to protect your home centers. You build the army. Tell us what your thought process was. Was it just always going to be an army, or was there a debate? It was first an army, but it wasn't to protect home centers. It was an army because I knew that if I was going to top this board, I needed to have some more offensive potential um, in taking um, German centers. So, and also there's the aspect of building an army is just a you're 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 doing a, another peace offering for France. <laughs> and so initially I put down an army and then I'm sitting there and I change it back to a fleet. And I'm like, I'm not going to trust this guy. This guy's done too much. I'm going to put the pressure on him. And then I went back to an army and I was like, no, no, I need to, I, if I'm going to win this game, I have to do an army. So it wasn't defensive. It was actually offensive why I built the army and to show Fran- – and I felt like it would kind of persuade France to move away from me, that there wasn't anything to get, and and I decided to go with the army. And so and so I let me so put he up, may have thought it was defensive, but in your mind, it's offensive. Yeah, it was offensive, but also at the same time, it was showing France, look, man, I I want to work with you. It's <laughs> just just give me the chance to. And, and, and I it think works. this, is a, yeah, it works. I think you look at the spring of '05. Yeah, and I think this is an important thing for players to understand. Like, you can be really upset to, with the person that's lying to you all the time, but if you're trying to top the board, you got to stick with your plan. And, you know, even with as Germany continued to, like, block block some stuff the first few, um, first few times, I kind of stuck with it because I, I had just committed myself to the north. And so 
it just felt like I had to continue on with it and eventually it worked. And and you do need to be flexible enough to change, but you also need to be committed enough to see things through. And that for you, me, you are super yeah. confident in France here. You didn't, I mean, I understand why you moved to York. It sets you up down the road, but you don't move to Liverpool. You believe him at this point. Yeah, I just, I didn't think that he would, would do that again because at the end of the day, it's not going to help him um, long term. And he sees Russia. He sees where Russia is. It just, I feel like it took him a year to see why we needed to work together. So, yeah, he moves away. I was pretty confident that that was going to happen. Um and um, you can see, you know, at this point, France, Austria support me against Germany. So both of them um, are helping but, me. I but, France cut, but France cuts support. Uh, yeah, I think France was, I don't know what he was hoping for. I, I didn't tell him anything on that side, though. I didn't tell France that Austria was helping me. My yeah. whole thought process on that is if he attacks me again, at least, you know, um, I had not told France about what Austria was doing, but I got his support and um, I convoy it over. And in France's mind, what we've talked about is once I get to kill, I'm going to help you into Munich. That's that's the offer there. You know, right. give me my space. Um, I move up to the Norwegian. Uh, that was an ask from Russia. Russia says, hey, why don't you move out from the Norwegian? I'll try to move down from St. Petersburg. So I said, okay, that's fine. Um, because if he if he took Norway, I have three three units on it, so I can take it back. Um, I wasn't really worried that he was going to lie to me about it, and so it's just you know build some goodwill. So I support that army. Have, yeah, I mean, and now yeah, you've got you still have fleet north. You can convoy if you need to, but I'd like to see what happens to your good buddy France. Yeah, this was a this was a little comeuppance. Um, the other thing too about Norwegian that was nice is in my mind, um, if all my stuff works out, I can do an attack on France and kind of the conversation Austria and I've had is says, look, you know, Russia and France are the big ones. We're going to have to move on both of them and help each other in some way if we're going to try to top this board. So we've already kind of talked a little bit about, you know, us working together to stop the two at the time, the two the two with the best position and um so rush is of course encouraging me to hit france too and i'm saying all the right things which in my mind with where i was at in my mind i was like probably going to attack france at least in those initial conversations i hadn't really thought about what was next but i see that okay you know i can take belgium you know he had taken it for me <laughs> and uh right so I can take you can Belgium, take Belgium and, and you know his fleet's going to go help out with Italy. Yeah. Yep. That's and fantastic. Yeah, what's going on with Russia here? The double, well, a bounce and then a mutual order to each other's centers in Denmark and Sweden. Yeah, that I, I told him, I said, look, I'm moving to Sweden and that way if you try to take it, I said, you know, I said, it's just defensive. You know, that way if he tries to take it, I'm going to get into Sweden or I'm going to break support. So he already knew I was going to do it, but it was just a defensive setup if he tried to do it. I, which and he could Norway, have done. Norway was agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all. All of those moves up there in the north were agreed. Um, and and by the way, he could have done that because this would have been the time to stab to to, to take that and build build something in the north. So. Um, well, yeah, but he's already stabbing. He's already stabbed Turkey. He's committed to that. Well, he's getting centers. He's going to be yeah. getting two builds. So anything, you know, take Norway. And so my thought, I saw that, that that would have been a good time for him to make that change. So I said, look, I'm going to move to Sweden. I'm going to move to Norway. I said, if you want, you can even support St. Petersburg to Norway because I'll break support and bounce. And I said, maybe we can play off that. Um, I see what's going on there in Belgium. So I set up to do it. France obviously thinks I'm going to be helping him into Munich. That is not the case. And um, and at the same time, I actually did talk with Italy. I think it was this turn. And I said, look, I said, you know, he's upset at Turkey. He's upset at Austria. I said, look, if you want to help somebody, please <laughs> help know. me. Yeah, help me. I go, France has attacked you. I said, he's like, well, I'm mad at them. I'm like, well, France started the whole thing. <laughs> and I said, don't. I think this is the turn I said this to him. And so he took Naples. 
So um, Austria, I mean, France is going to actually go down a center here rather than going up one, um, which that's always stinks when that happens. <laughs> um, yeah. So you got Sab and now it. here come the fleets. Yeah, I plopped the two fleets down. Uh, I can't. I wasn't committed against going to against France, but I knew I had to do that because Russia is going to expect that move set. Where did France disband? Or was the army uh, blown up? No, it retreated. Um, well, he he just dis, I don't think it retreated. I think the one in Naples he um he just uh, disbanded it when it got when it got uh, dislodged. Okay. Got it. I may be wrong on that, but I think that's what happened. All right. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, I don't remember. Something like that. Um, okay. Oh, so, he dis- uh, yeah, I got you. All right. So, okay, here we go. We got the two fleets. Tell me, are you even talking to France at this point? Or is that done? Oh, for, oh, I know yeah, you're talking no, no, to we're later, talk- but right now. No, no. Oh, yeah, we're talking. Because I and told him, I said, well, like, I just couldn't trust you. No, I said, um, I didn't say that. I said, you know, you took Belgium from me. And I said, um, I basically said, look, all of us know that Russia is the real dangerous one here. He's sitting at nine. He's got these builds. He's going to get Smyrna when he wants. I said, um, we know Russia is the dangerous one at this point. I said, I made these builds. I see it. And, and Austria is also saying, hey, I'm going to move on Russia. Now's our time. I said, look, I'm going to do Liverpool to Wales. I'm not going to move to the Irish Sea, and I'm not going to move to the English Channel. And I said, um, I'll move against Russia. You keep going the direction you want. I said, if me and you start fighting, neither one of us are going to board top. So I said, I took Belgium back. I said, I originally had it. I And, and I think what he said to me, it's always interesting when these go through, because we were all in the uh, – and the way this tournament worked, we were all in the um, the main room together. And people see it for the first time and they're like, oh, <laughs> you know, when you make when you when you see something like that happen. But he no, I think he was OK in the sense that, you know, he had lied to me so many times that I think it was fair for me to get one from him <laughs> and uh, at least to do to do one lie. Fair um, in your mind. So uh, what would you say? Fair in your mind. He's thinking, well, he always promised me Belgium. Well, the thing – no, I think he said to me, well, I guess I had it coming or something like – it was something along those lines he said it. But, of course, right. he's not going to believe me that I'm going to go against Russia because of how I built. And um, Let, Let's move on to the spring. Yeah. You follow through on what you say. Yeah, and, and he didn't say – I can't remember what he was going to say either way, if he was going to go back there or not. And I said, you know, you can do what you want. I said, but I'm going to be moving against Russia. So I make my move. Another good move, I, I feel, was destroying his army in Ruhr. For me, that was really important because he w- had surrounded my guys, and I felt like I needed to take that spot. And so um, I, I destroy that, and now I'm the one who has the power. Did he know you were moving to Ruhr at that point? No. Like, did you just no. say, go to Munich and I'll follow through? That, that seemed risky if you knew it. No, and I may have told him I was going to support him. I and I, it's very possible I told him I was going to support him to Munich. I think that's very likely. I told him that, um, but I didn't. I, I took, I took, I, I, I punched her out. But I also didn't move to attack him. So um, why does he go for Belgium here? He cuts your uh, support in Belgium. Like well, I think. Oh, because, because he, he wanted to get. Over. He was worried that you well, were. Gonna- he want- no, he he moved towards Munich. He wants to get Munich. Right, so but he's cutting Belgium. I, yeah, I think it was probably just this is something I can do, and I don't know. I don't. But I make my move here, and ultimately this was for for Russia and Russia. Um, and I'm hard <laughs> again. Yes, he did. This is brutal. He already got out of the first one, but this one yeah. is a killer for him. Yeah, it wasn't good. I'm not sure exactly what he would have done. He probably would have bounced me in Norway, um, for sure. But uh, yeah, I go ahead and make my moves. It was it was a very obviously a very costly MNR. Make sure everybody that you get your moves in pretty much right away. So France sees here that I've got now. Now here's an important thing. Okay, so this is a really pivotal move. This next one, both Austria and Russia are coming to me. 
and Austria and Russia are like, you know, Russia's at nine, I'm at eight. All right. The but I've you've made, got Sweden. You've got you yeah. you you're gonna go up. Well, so this is going into the fall. Right. And I've already made my move against Russia. And so Austria comes to me. We're actually in a three way talk. And they're like, you go against France and then we'll do a three way draw. We'll all get the same units and we'll be done. And I'm like, is this really what you both want to do? I said, I said, well, in my opinion, who's, I the, like who's the other be- participant? Austria, you and, and Russia? Yes. So Austria is telling me. Russia is telling me, let's all get the same amount. Now, here's the thing. You need to understand scoring systems. You know, doing a three-way draw in a draw-based scoring system is great. Doing a three-way draw even in a carnage system is good. And even in a a, a sum of squares system, you know, depending on how things are going to do in Outlook, it's not bad. But in Tribute, it's terrible. You get, like, maybe 20 points. In this type of a setting, maybe 18, and, and so I mean, I don't I don't know if those if they understood tribute as much or if there was something else going on, but at this point we're about to go into the fall. Their whole thing is you attack France, we'll keep all the centers we have. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking I don't think so. And it's at this point where I told France, I mean I told I told France, look, I said I'm going to support you to Munich. You take Munich, you can have it. And the big reason to this was I needed to chop Austria down a little bit because Austria wasn't going to help me. And there's another point. In the fall, like I know we're looking right now at the spring, but in the fall, he won't support me to Berlin. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm like, I said, well, why? And he said, well, you know, I don't want you to get too big. And I'm like, OK. And so that when he met, said that, that's especially when I said, OK, fine. And so I wouldn't have probably done that if he would have said he was going to support me to Berlin. But because he didn't. I told I, I went to France and said, look, I'm going to support you. I go, I will support you with both Kiel and Ruhr um, to get you in. And so he saw that I moved to Wales. I didn't move against him. And so in the next move, this was a really, really important move set. Here we go. Austria. Yeah, Austria loses Munich. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. no. I do that next turn. Whoops. Sorry. OK, so he doesn't support me. I make the play on Berlin. I make the play on Sweden. And um, he, I think his was a purposeful misorder because I don't even think at that point I had told him kill to Berlin. I, I'm a year ahead of myself right now. So we, we do no the problem. bounce in the English. Yeah, we do the bounce in the English channel that was agreed upon um, for the fall move. And, and I moved the fleet into the North Sea. That's to uh, get ready to take Sweden the next year. Um, other than that. You know, we we can move on to the next one. All right, there we go. Winter, no builds for you, no problem. And then we'll go to the next move. Yeah, um, he builds an army. So at this point, he's really showing me, yes, let's work together. So th- this is the spring move, and, and that's it's always important to remember that, you know, you don't get the centers in the spring, <laughs> you know, if you get those <laughs> in the fall. So I'm all set up. I know I can take Sweden when I want it. And the thing that I was wondering about was, is there going to be an attack on on um, kill? So I – and the other thing is Russia this whole time is if either if you attack me, I'm going to throw to the other. So I was kind of like, you know what, I'm going to – wait and see what Austria does. And Austria is saying to me, this is the point here at, at during the spring, after the spring, he's saying to me, let's do this three-way draw. He's at eight. I'm at eight. Russia's at nine. All right. Right. Now Russia's just put an army down in Armenia. All right. And he is going to be taking Smyrna. And so I tell him, I say, well, I should take Sweden because that's going to keep Russia at nine and I'll go to nine. Oh no, 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 don't do that. You go take it from France. And Austria is agreeing with this. Austria is like, yeah, don't take Sweden. Well, you where's know? Austria getting his to? I guess I don't know Bulgaria or I don't know against France, but they're they're both they're both doing the same thing. And this is when he's telling me, no, I'm not going to support you to Berlin because I, now I have the fleet there in Baltic to do it. So 
this is the point. You know, France has shown himself to be true. Austria is competing against me for, you know, board top. Russia's the other one. This is the point, you know, with Austria telling me these things, he's not going to help me to Berlin. He's not, you know, he's, the, don't take Sweden. Um, where I, where I just decided, all right, I'm going to push France into Munich and, hurt, you know, hurt you. I'm going to take Sweden, obviously, because I'm not going to let Russia get a build. And, uh, that was the thing that was just like bonkers to me. We're going to put Russia at 10. Like I, 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 and I told in, in this group chat with all three of us, I told Austria, I said, look, I said, you should be demanding that Russia not take this. I was like, I don't get it. I said, I don't understand it. And they keep going on and on. And so I was like, well. I said, if that's what you two want to do, I go, I guess I'll go towards, I'll go towards France. And so with Austria, I told Austria, support me into Burgundy, you know, support word of Burgundy and I'll go ahead and start going to work on France, which I didn't do. <laughs> so he, that, that's one of those ones where I, I, as I recall, Austria had a, uh, an audible gasp when he saw what happened. And, uh, um, yeah, well, this takes you know, him out get of the a, competition for the board top. And it puts you in a tie with yeah. Russia. Yeah, pretty much. And um, you know, I'm I'm going to nine. He's dropped to seven. Russia's at nine. But um, Berlin and Saint Petersburg are now under assault. Right. So it's uh, a a good spot. Um, we're going now into what's going to be the last year. I'm in a pretty good position. Uh, me and oh. France have, are working great together. Yeah. Yeah, you build the army. And you know what's interesting at this point? You know, Russia now is pushing a two-way draw, which I wasn't going to accept anyway. But I have learned from my past mistake. I will never shoot down a draw unless I'm in the lead. I mean, I mean, I mean, I will never, I will never say anything against a draw ever, never again. So, I will so never say something a, publicly. So this is interesting uh, uh, with a weasel moot. Everyone can verbally agree to a draw. But then you have to confirm it with a private message to the GM. That was a draw vote but you can had publicly, at this point. You can publicly sure. it. and then yeah, privately send a different different message. Yes. Never publicly veto a draw because that can always be used against you. So Austria at this moment, he publicly vetoes the draw. Austria he publicly. Does. Yeah, Austria does because Austria is now at seven, and they're like. You know, no, you know, they're they're very frustrated by that ha happening. So he vetoes the draw. Well, there's no place for him to get builds at this point. <laughs> you know, really, not really. Maybe um, Bulgaria, but, you know, can't get but yeah, but it takes something from Yeah, it takes something from Russia. And so I don't even have to play the game. And I just tell Russia, I go, look, man, it's it's Austria who's publicly vetoed it. And I said, you know, go get some centers from him. Make him do it, which. You know, in the spring, so then he goes ahead and he moves towards them, and then then Austria's even more upset now. He's blaming Russia, and I Russia's blaming Austria for things, and uh, so Austria it comes to me and he's like, look, he's like, you go ahead and board top, you can grab all of Russia's centers for all I care, and uh, uh, I do kind of the same thing. This is kind of um, you know, playing it safe a little bit, letting France get into Burgundy. So then I can make a play on Berlin. Russia is telling me, oh, I'm going to help France board top or something, which, you know, I don't I don't know how he's going to do that. But, you know, I don't know how he's planning to help. You know, he can't really help France do really anything against me, really. That's the long term. That's it. Yeah. But, yeah. Correct. But I'm going to I'm going to kind of guard against that happening in this next turn. Um, All right. So, so then I we go to. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm I'm moving up to make a play on St. Petersburg. I tell Austria, hey, hit Silesia. You know, so this is for the fall. I tell him hit Silesia. I'm planning to take Berlin. And my whole plan here is, all right, we'll do the draw because Russia's going to see it won't happen. Austria's going to see it won't happen. France will see that I'm in the board top position and and it'll go through. And so I I I could have gone to uh, Kiel to Berlin. I could have supported a kill to Berlin, um, which is normally what I would do in that situation. But I was a little leery that Russia might support Munich to kill. Um, but at the same time, by moving this way, I also was saying, look, I'm, I'm ready done. for the draw. 
I am ready for the draw. If anyone vetoes it, it won't be me. So that was the other option, the other point in there too. I didn't put it into Holland, you know, trying to show France, look, this isn't, if anyone vetoes the draw, it will not be me. And, and Russia previously threatened me, oh, you know, I, I will never, ever accept the draw. But, you know, people say that, you know, if you're not going to win, why in the world are you going to play four or five more hours to make sure that you don't get any more points to punish well, somebody? The answer is anger. But, you know, you hadn't done much to anger him. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean, like, like, nobody should be angry at somebody playing to win. Now, it's one thing if they play and they hurt themselves and you. That's frustrating when someone makes a play that doesn't help them and only hurts you. That That's what really bothers I mean, at least for me, what really bothers me are when people make moves that don't really help them at all, and it just hurts them and you. So... Um, when it hurts both of you. So at this point, you know, I, I, I had made moves that helped me. So Russia is an experienced player. And so they know that. And so they go ahead and accept the draw and I board top. You have 11. But, but the funny thing is, if I'm not miscounting it correctly, France goes up to eight and Russia goes down to eight. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you helped you helped France after all get a get a shared second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 by the way, that's the alliance I've been wanting to do the whole game. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> it, I played in it. I didn't stab France. Um, you know, tribute really, really rewards topping the board. And this was the way to go about doing it. Um, and if anyone would have would have I, the way I was building, I was building. I was gonna, I was gonna move against France if someone um, vetoed it, because it would most likely have been France in that situation, in my opinion. And there was, I was just pretty impregnable. Nobody else was gonna be getting bigger than me, so it just made sense. Um, this so, was not as clear cut, and you can see I grew four centers in two years. At the end, I went from seven, I think, to eleven. I think, right. or it was eight to a. It was really quick, whatever it was, and. It all happened because just getting things in the right place and sticking to the plan, and it, it, it all came together. Now, this will not air until the entire tournament is over, but if I'm not mistaken, you're in the top two. You're in second place of all the roughly 49 players who played game one. Is that right? Yeah, and so it's a good position to get to the final board. I think I, I probably need 20 or 30 more points to make it, um which means for, a minor board top
Anyways, Umbel, thank you. Anyone listening this thus far and wants to comment on whether Umbel is capable of self-delusion, we'd be happy to have your comment. And uh, I will tell you this, one thing you shouldn't be delusional about is diplomacybriefing.com, the best resource of diplomacy information on the internet, uh, who happens to sponsor The Diplomats, which you can find at our very own website, thediplomats.net. Humble, thank you and good night.